Hey everyone and welcome to another episode from Lucky Fish. We had an amazing response to last week's episode in our new real-time vlog format, so thanks to all of you who commented and gave it a thumbs up. This week, Leo sees the boat for the first welcome time. Welcome aboard little fellow. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. We get a visit from Caleb, owner of a Warham Pahi 42 here in the Rio, and learn how to cut Dyneema netting. Leo. Ah. Zaya gives Leo her version of the Mongolian rock band, The Who. And I run through the cleaning products I'm using to get the outside of the boat back to new. We have an amazing year ahead and we'd really like to bring you along for the journey through these videos and for some of you in person. I've just updated the rewards on our Patreon page, so please head over there and take a look, see what's on offer. I know many of you are on a shoestring budget like us, but for those of you that can afford a few bucks a month to help us keep producing these videos, your help would truly be appreciated. And as always, a huge thank you to our existing patrons. I'm Stuart and this is Zaya. Normally we are sailing our reasonably priced catamaran, Lucky Fish, across an ocean or around the islands. But this year we stayed in Mongolia to have this little guy. Subscribe and join our journey. Plan for today is pulling out the tacker cat out of the port hull. It's been stowed in the galley there and inflating it, getting the outboard on it, getting it going. So then we've got transport between Ma Marine where our unit is and the boat. Haven't quite got into the routine of starting at 6am yet. Uh, a bit slow out of the bed this morning, playing with Leo, he was a great bundle of joy. Just going to check this lazarette. I uh, didn't get a good look at it yesterday. This stuff here, Desox, this is uh, something we were put onto last year, is a really good cleaner, but I don't know how widely available it is. Probably going to need some fuel today too. We drained all our fuel last year, gave it to the locals. Um, you know, old fuel is not very good for engines, so just get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to need that too. But in, overall, inside this lazarette, it looks uh, very clean. You're going to need some two-stroke oil for the tender outboard. Hopefully we've got a bit left over. The Yamaha Lube gear case. Outboard and two-stroke. Beautiful.
Pablito. También. <laughs> Don't disturb them. They're working. <laughs> problem with the fuel tap on these Yamaha 5 horses is uh, it corrodes. There's a little brass tang on the end here. A little lug. There's a knob supposed to go on there. That doesn't last very long. This is the one we replaced last season. Uh, they just seize up. It's supposed to rotate, turn the fuel on and off. But uh, this one's seized. Again, if you put any weight on that knob, you'll snap the brass lug and uh, that means replacing the tap so I'm taking it out I'm going to put a bit of heat on it and uh, see if we can free it up now just get these next two hoses off and we can put some heat on it this is the lug here it's on the outside and there's a knob supposed to go on that but uh, that didn't last so I just do it with pliers once it's free you can almost do it with your hand but it seizes in around that outside there. This tool is well worth getting in your kit. It's a Weller butane torch. I'm sure there's other sorts, but I quite like this one. It's very simple to use. It runs on butane gas, as in cigarette lighters. It's handy for little jobs like this where you need a bit of heat concentrated in one spot. Just get the gas flowing, turn the power up. Pretty hard to see the flame, but uh, I can see the heat coming off that, so that's cooking. Let's see how that goes. Okay, there's some movement there now. All right, well, it hasn't taken much. A little bit more heat and uh, now it's quite free so I'll try and pull it out and uh, see if we've damaged there's an o-ring seal in there a little locking screw there okay might be one right inside there it feels a bit rubbery but it all looks all right so I think we'll stay with that and uh, put a bit of lube on this and slide it back in again. Pretty lucky that it uh, didn't damage that o-ring, although we do have a spare set of o-rings on board, all different sizes, very useful. Well she's a goer, that's the main thing. That's uh, Ram Marina directly behind me, just to just see how close we are to Mar Marine. That's Mar Marine right over there. So back home again after what was a pretty good day. Back home to see Zaya and see what Leo's been up to for the day. Leo. Ah. <laughs> 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 this rock dancing. Just using this uh, Desox, it's a boat cleaner, deoxidizer, very good for gel coat and painted surfaces. It was given to us by Ma Gruitt, she's got a uh, Beneteau 411 here. Sadly her husband passed away last year and so the boat's on the market. 
It's been on the market for a year. I think Mars pretty keen on doing a, uh, a deal on it. So any of you monohull sailors out there who want to buy a very nice Beneteau 411 already in a great cruising location, drop me an email and I'll put you in touch with her. Well, I spent several hours yesterday trying to remove the black streaks from about half of the port side of the hull. I found that I simply couldn't get out the last, the inner layer of uh, the black streaks in the paint. So I went over to the shop and I thought, wouldn't it be good if they produced a product that removed black streaks? And lo and behold, I found this little beauty. And it's saving me a lot of time. It lifts the stuff straight out. You just let it soak in and then wash it off and the results speak for themselves. This is a bit of polished stainless steel, but uh, when they machined it to polish it, it got too hot and it destroyed the stainless qualities of the metal so we have a constantly recurring rust stain. Normally it's not this bad, but it, it's just a matter of applying a little bit of this stainless steel rust remover and letting it sit while it does its work. This is actually our first time to see lucky fish. Right, Leah? Right? You're wondering why mommy talking to herself. So that's after the first coat of that uh, rust remover. It's a hell of an improvement. Um, it needs a bit more, obviously, to get it finished off, but I've just had it sitting on there for an hour or so. Ah, that's Zoya. Hello. Hola! Look at you! What are you? Who have you got there? Hello! Quite a bit of walk and hot. I bet you are, yeah, yeah. Come on up! This is Leo's first look at the boat and he's not looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. you got precious cargo. He's grabbing the stairs. Yeah, oh yeah. He likes, as Mummy does, he does too. Uh, welcome aboard, little fellow. Hello. 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 Welcome on Lucky Fish. Yeah. Yeah, this is Lucky Fish. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm happy to see you too. Yeah. See, we started stripping. <laughs> on the way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, well, you better go fully ape soon. Oh, they're chilled and relaxing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Looks like you're pretty happy too. New mm -hmm. burrito. What do you think of Lucky Fish, Leo? Is it a bit early to say? It's got plenty of areas for lounging around, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> is it nice laying on, on the deck? <coughs> Just putting on the last application of the rust remover. That should do it. I've just had a welcome visit from Caleb Wright who's uh, bought a Pahi 42 over in the Rio Dulce here and he's kindly, well I won't say giving because we haven't talked about price yet. This is an issue that's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's kindly uh, brought over an offcut from his, what do we call this stuff Caleb? Uh, this is Dyneema netting. What sort of knife are you cutting it with there? Because this stuff's pretty tough, right? This is a very, very hard to find, very expensive dollar knife from Walmart. The six dollar knife from Walmart, I like it. Uh, you have to find the uh, white uh, ceramic variety. They cut this very well. well. This pilchard netting we put on in South Africa has actually done really well. 
It was supposed to last about five years. It's been on for four. Um, there's no sign of it going through yet, but well, you know, if you know anything about trampolines on a cat, you are very wary about standing on them. There's been some really tragic stories. So having this stuff on is, is worth its weight in gold because we get a lot of peace of mind by having the same stuff that they make bulletproof vests out of. What was the name of the place where you sourced this from? This is Net Systems out of Seattle. They, they make uh, commercial crabbing gear, etc., for Alaska. Yes. And they sell the netting at a pretty reasonable price. It's not cheap, but it's very good. And uh, they also sell uh, Dyneema lines at pretty close to the same cost. You can get nylon line from uh, West Marine. So they're very reasonable guys and, and they make fishing nets, right? And now they've moved into, well, there's a bit of a sideline. They're doing catamaran tramps. Well, they don't, I don't, they don't make tramps. They just sell the netting. So that, yeah, okay. So you so get a kit kind of thing and you just way get you go. a big pile of netting and yep. uh, they, give, they do show some instructions on how to uh, do a rolling hitch around the outside with a bolt rope, leave it up to you to fit it to your boat. Yeah, well this, this stuff is the Rolls Royce for catamaran nets, um, for trampolines. I think uh, I've heard quotes from you know around the $2,000 mark to do a, even a small tramp like this on the Tiki 38. Well, and my tramp is uh, almost 20 feet deep. Oh, that's good. So, so this bit isn't going to cost me much, right? You know, in the scheme of things. No. I mean, you spend a lot on 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 your boat, and this is just like a little little nick out of the corner, isn't it? Really. It, it is. So, so what? How much are we talking here? <laughs> What's your poison bottle of rum? Well, uh, I'm joking. I, I appreciate her getting me on camera <laughs> to. Uh, to negotiate price here. I'm, I'm but, joking. I've uh, already offered you whatever it's worth, mate. I had actually decided that uh, on the way here that since Net Systems accidentally gave me some extra, <laughs> I was going to pass it on for free. Oh, so, but I've uh, ruined my chances now. From <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, mate. Keep on cutting with your $6 Walmart knife. <laughs> well, that's about it for this week. During the week we did a tour of Caleb's Party 42 and we're looking forward to bringing you that video shortly. There's also a Warham Oro here and we've been in touch with the owner and we've made arrangements with Mike. Uh, we hope at the end of February to do a boat tour of his boat as well. That looks like an interesting story too. It was used in charter here in the Rio Dulce. Now we're just about to hit 20,000 subscribers which is a huge milestone for us. We're also right up to over 4 million views now, which is pretty amazing. We're going to celebrate with publishing our 100th episode in a couple of weeks' time, just in time for the Christmas break. We're going to make it a special episode, and you can help us celebrate too by helping us reach 100 patrons. We're very close now, so please head over to the Patreon page and check out those new rewards. As always, leave us your comments below, give it a like if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and thank you for watching.